Hi, my name is Emma. My name is Madeline. Hi, I'm Dakota. I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Holly. My name is Melissa. I'm Jody. My name is Myra. Hello, I'm Belva. Before we came here, we all lived in heaven with Heavenly Father and Jesus his Son. It's where they taught us to choose good from evil, to be prepared for the battle to come. I've had a lot of hard times during my life because I really haven't like been reading the scriptures and I stopped praying and I felt really sad and lonely inside and then I started praying again and reading the scriptures mostly and I felt the spirit strongly and I feel really happy inside now because I know that the scriptures are true and that we came here so we could live with Heavenly Father again and it's it, this earth is just like a test it it's a test to see how we can keep be obedient and keep the commandments that Jesus set for us and the example he set for us lately I've been a little stressed with school and I remember on Sunday just crying to my parents saying that I would not be able to finish everything by today or tomorrow because of midterms. And I would not be able to get my grades up because I just got accepted into the National Junior Honor Society and I, I, I was afraid I was going to be kicked out. And I remember my dad just saying to calm down and take a breath and that the whole entire reason why they chose me was so because they knew that I could do this. And then I remember going up to my room and sitting on my bed and while I was crying my eyes out, praying to God, asking Him if He would help me give the, get the strength to finish all these assignments. And after I said that prayer, I remember I just stopped crying. And I got right to work and luckily I finished everything, so no panic. <laughs> um, so, um, and it was like the Spirit was telling me, you can do this, I will help you. Um, I know God loves me and I know that the church is true and I know what they teach here is true. You're ashamed, confused, think nobody understands what you're going through. It began around, you know, the time when my brother died. That's when I was really confused of who I was and like, I was just really confused. I did not know what, who I was and like if I respected myself or if just anything mattered, if that makes sense. Um, continuing on in my life, I would struggle with a lot of things like church, friends, school, and it just became this huge snowball effect of emotions built up in me. And I just, I, that was a big question is, who am I? Like, who am I? Am I these kids at this school? Like, what group do I fit in? Do I, and just all these questions, pretty much. Like, I can go on and on um, until my sophomore year when I hit my lowest point and I was just like, I was just done. And I just kind of gave up. And at that point, 
I just knew that I was missing something so big in my life. And by this time, I cut off religion, I've cut out friends, and I just cut out so much in my life. Even my family that I just felt completely lost. <laughs> and at that point, I just, I just was prompted and I was to pray. And I was just like praying, but like, that's weird, like I even, I don't, I guess, believe in God or I just don't believe that He's there and when I did pray, it was just, I was overcome with this amazing peace and just, just like, <laughs> like I'm here for you and at that moment I knew that I was a child of God. As soon as I felt that, I just, I took it. And I knew this is the little inch I got and I'm gonna run with it. And so I ran with it and I just, I started going back to church. I started like being good in school. I started getting friends that were helping me achieve where I needed to be. And I started growing better with my family and I just, I became so involved with the world around me that I just didn't realize how wonderful life was. When I realized how wonderful life was and that it wasn't this low, depressing moment in my life, I just realized like God is so amazing. Like, and because of Him um, and growing closer to Him, I just, I've taken the world and I've pushed it away and I've grown so much and I love God <laughs> and he's helped me to become who I am and the unity I have with him I try to bring to others around me. I grew up in a emotionally and verbally and neglectful um, abusive home and um, the biggest challenge is just learning how to get out of that, but um, the way that I got out is the gospel. Without going into too much detail, we were just kind of raised to think that we were worthless and wouldn't amount to much and we were stupid and no one would ever love us. And unfortunately, up until about I was 12, I just thought that was completely normal. I thought all families were like that. and. Um, Everyone was treated that way, and that was just normal interaction. Um, and one day, we weren't very active. We went to church on Sundays, and that was about it. One day, I can't even remember why, but I was reading in the Book of Mormon, and um, I read a passage that was talking about Nephi and how he was living differently than his brothers. And I read just one passage, and it said, and Nephi was not like his brothers, and the Spirit just hit me like a load of bricks. The strongest I had thus far felt it in my whole life. Um, and the Spirit just spoke to me and said, you can be different. Um, and it sounds crazy, but at the time, it had never even occurred to me even the slightest way that you could be different, that other families could be different, or they were different, and you could live a different life than the way you were raised. But um, it was a personal revelation of mine where the Spirit really testified to me and gave me, I don't want to say instant wisdom, but wisdom to me that I had never had in that one moment. And it was like I understood an entirely different world that I had never had access to. Um, and the best way I can describe it is a little flame was lit inside me. And it was there throughout my whole childhood. Um, and every single time I wanted to give up, every single time I wanted to give in to thinking that way, that I would never amount to much, that flame would just light again. Um, and it really was that. It was Heavenly Father being there and the gospel being in my life every step of the way that taught me things that I shouldn't know, that I didn't have anybody to teach me and somehow I knew them and somehow I learned them and somehow they came about along the way and I was raised. <laughs> I was raised by my Heavenly Father and I may not have had a father here on earth to raise me correctly, but I had one in, he in heaven raising me correctly that got me to the same place as everybody else. <laughs> so I didn't realize when we decided to grow our family 
how different it would be from other people's experiences. And as we prayed and moved forward, um, we did some infertility treatments. And as we wanted to grow our family and start our family, we thought it would come a lot easier. Um, one thing that we did was in vitro and the medications didn't work like they should, so we had to do more and start again. And when we had transplanted some embryos and we were waiting to see, um, I had a prompting that in vitro wouldn't work. And I received a blessing and knew that Heavenly Father loved me. He loved me. And that He knew how challenging this is. How difficult. And that even though it didn't work, that He would still love me and care for me and that it would be okay. And I was grateful because um, Phil and I found out before we were supposed to know and let everyone know. And so we had some time to process on our own. And um, I just felt such a sense of gratitude and he blessed me with gratitude for the things that I did have. I had my health, I had my family. I knew that he loved me and understood and that it would be okay, even though it was hard. And I was really grateful because it was very difficult. It was really difficult to know that didn't work. And then we were led to adoption and they're all really close together. We ended up having four, um, two and a half and under. And so we, that's not the normal transition for a family. And you don't transition like a normal family would. You know, there's not that normal time. And so that's something that I think has shaped my life and will always have an influence and always feel that and feel that challenge and the different things that that brings. I think the most important thing is that you are enough. You are enough, I am enough, we are enough. Um, God loves us, He loves me. He cares about me, He cares about my every day. Every day, taking the kids to school, trying to cook lunch, trying to get them down for naps, trying to connect with my family, trying to balance all the different things, church callings. Um, we are enough and God wants us to know that we are enough and that He will bridge those gaps that we can't do on our own and He'll strengthen the weaknesses that we have. But I think if we cannot let Satan into our minds, into our hearts and make us feel poorly about ourselves, that is the most important part for me is that I am enough. He loves me and I am enough and I can do amazing things and He'll help me with that. I remember people asking me when I was eight years old what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I always said I wanted to be a mom. They're like, oh, that's fine, but what do you want to do in college? And I'm like, nothing, I just want to be a mom. So um, I met my husband, and at the time I thought I was going to be an old maid because I was 23 when I met my husband. and. We clicked, we dated for a year. Um, I was a month shy of turning 25 and I really felt my biological clock going. And I felt like we needed to start a family and I just wanted to live my dream. And a little did we know that we didn't, we wouldn't be able to have kids. Tate came into our home with a helmet because he would hit his head, he would hit, and he would do nothing but cry and scream, he would do nothing like that. And so we were trying to understand why he was supposed to be here when all we couldn't get the connection with him, we couldn't get him to bond with us, we couldn't do anything with us. And I kept trying to create that bond, I kept trying to love him, I kept trying to just let him know that it was okay. So we got Tate in September, and right around Thanksgiving time, Tate's birth mom found out that we had him. It was the 29th of December, Cannon was born, and she signed away her rights to both boys on the 30th of December. So we had this four-year-old princess that got completely dethroned. We had this two-and-a-half-year-old boy that was ripped out of the only home that he had known, even though it, he was neglected and he was abused. It was the only home that he knew, and he was not happy with us, and we had a newborn. And so our house was kind of crazy for 
our house was kind of crazy for a while. So my, my middle child, I always felt like that he resented me because I was the one that went and picked him up. I was the one that took him from his home. He became very angry at me. He became very hurtful to me. And so I never knew when the situations with Tate and I would arise. And I would always feel, um, I would always feel like it would be easier to do. And so I stopped, I stopped doing family functions. I would send my husband and my kids. I would fake a sickness. I stopped doing friend functions. I didn't know if we were going to be at a park and things would get violent. So it's easier to put on a smile on your face and say everything's fine than face reality. And so that was wrong. That was super wrong of me. I, I, I needed the love and support that friends and family offered. I needed their strength. I needed to know that I wasn't alone and that it's okay to have problems and to have struggles. In fact, it got so bad before we did counseling, I went into the bishop's office and I slid my temple recommend across the desk and I go, I'm not worthy of this. I am not worthy of this. I'm not worthy to be a mom. I'm not worthy. I think I'm a child abuser. I like speaking my child. And he just slid it back to me He's and he smiles. He's like, okay, so let's see what we need to do. He's the one that recommended that we start counseling. And as I was leaving the bishop's office, he told me, he's like, Jody, Heavenly Father wants you to know that you are worth it and you are good enough and you never have to question about being worthy to be a mom. So we've gone counseling and one time the counselor told me, he's like, I want you to come up with a scripture story. I want you to come up with one and just to see what, how you can find a connection between you and your son using the scriptures. And I was praying about it and thinking about it, the only scripture reference I could come up with was the story of Laman and Lemuel. And I'm like, great, Heavenly Father, thanks. <laughs> you know, thanks for giving me that one. Laman and Lemuel went inactive. You know, they tried to hurt their brother. They tried to do all of that. I go, what is the reason you want me to focus on Laman and Lemuel? And I received the prompting to look deeper. Laman and Lemuel's parents, Lehi and Sariah, they never stopped crying over them. They never stopped praying over Laman and Lemuel. They never stopped loving Laman and Lemuel. And as I saw that and as I was thinking about that, the simple concept was they never stopped. They never stopped. And I love it because that's what I needed to hear. That's what I needed to feel, that I cannot stop. I it was sent here so that way Heavenly Father can trust me to be his mom and to be able to love him and to that Heavenly Father can trust me to love him. We'll have our ups and downs, but I think that's what's bringing us stronger as a family is that we are able to face it and we're able to trust each other and to love each other and trust in our Heavenly Father. The gospel gave me in life everything happiness. I'm not saying that I was not happy before, but I feel something empty in my heart and the gospel feel it out for me. The gospel is everything in my life. It's happiness, it's peace, it's love, it's charity, it's um, everything. Um, I never, never go to regret to learn about the gospel. And every morning, every night, and every time that I have, I always thank Heavenly Father for the opportunity that He gave me to learn about the Gospel and this dispensation. I'm not perfect, and He still loves me, and He still is my big brother that I have to look. He's my example. And, uh, and I, I always ask myself, did Jesus do this? And if I feel it, that the answer is yes, I do it. No matter what it is, I do it. Um, so to me, he gave us the gift of, of life after death. That's a big thing. So, uh, him and Heavenly Father are everything in my life. And it was one experience that I, I had in the temple, and I don't really like to talk about it. 
when I lost my daughter, like I say, I was so angry with the Heavenly Father. But uh, when I went back to church after two and a half months, um, I used to ask him every single night and every single morning that the only thing that I want is to see my daughter again. Years went by, I don't know how many, I don't remember how many years. And one of the goals that I put in my life was like going to the temple once a week for a whole year. And, uh, and every time that I was going, I used to ask him, what do you want me to learn in here? And please give me the opportunity to see my daughter again. And nothing happened. And one time, I said, I'm here. And I know you're here with me. Please let me see my daughter. And I was able to cross the bed. And I was able to see my daughter. I was alone. It's hard. And that confirmed me that my Heavenly Father and Jesus love me. No matter who you are, no matter what you do in life, they love you. And I, like I say, I can't see my life without the gospel, without them. And I'm not going to change anything. Brother Moyle, Bishop Moyle, Dr. Moyle, whatever we call him, he and I have lived in the South Ogden Stake for 52 years. We moved here when he took a position at Weber State, and we have loved it here, and we have had a very nice life, and it's always been centered around the gospel. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate by, about my husband is that the gospel was foremost, and he would take any position, anything they asked him to do, he did it, and did it 100%. And so we've been married now for 60 years in September, and I'm going through a challenge in my life that about two years ago, we started to notice that he was having some problems with his memory, and forgetting things, and driving became awful. And so we started thinking about things and so he stayed home with me for about a year and a half and then we as a family met and decided it was time for him to go into a memory cottage. He has been in the memory cottage since last June and my children are good to go see him. I go just about every day and spend time with him. But it is a challenge that I really don't wish on any of the rest of people. But it's happening a lot, but it's hard for me to come home and leave him there because I feel, I don't know whether I feel guilty. I don't want to feel guilty, but I, it's hard. It's hard to come home to the home with, that we've shared for so long and, and we were always to everything together. But we've had a lovely life together and so this is just a part of it now. The importance of the gospel in our lives has made it possible for me to um, trans, tra I don't know what the word is, to move into this phase of our lives. And um, I have felt the, the promptings of my Heavenly Father and the Savior. When I've been especially discouraged and have prayed about it, I get, I get up and I feel like this is, I'm doing what my Heavenly Father wants me to do at this time. I just really feel that without the gospel, I don't know how people handle these things, but the gospel has made this better for us. And, and I know that he, he probably feels that too. I'm at the stage of my life where I'm enduring to the end. And um, I want, I want my Heavenly Father to know that I'm, I will do whatever He wants me to do. And 
with this little change that came in the stake, where we moved out of our ward and into a new building, um, I feel like I, if I don't do that, then why should my Heavenly Father bless me? He's asked us to do this, and I, it's the way it's been our whole life. You do, you do things because you know that's what your Heavenly Father wants you to do, and He would not ask you to do more than you can handle. Be you. <laughs> doesn't matter how rich you are, doesn't matter how pretty you are, doesn't matter what you look like or anything, it just matters that you are you. Motherhood is hard, but it is so worth it. And I would love to share with moms that it's okay when your child asks for it a thousand kisses to give them a thousand kisses. I would give them the advice to always keep praying and reading the scriptures at least once a day and to always be obedient and follow the Lord's commandments and think before you do something. Um, I would like to share to other women to no matter what the challenges are, never give up and never, ever let the hand of the Heavenly Father go. Just realize that you can trust in God and like, it's okay. It's okay to trust in Him. It was 20 years by the time I figured it out. I was 20 years old. And I got down on my knees and I said, Heavenly Father, the world tells me this of myself. Even some of my family tells me this of myself. Sometimes my friends tell me things of myself. What do you think of me? What is your opinion of me? Um, and the greatest feeling of love came over me. That he loves me. And to feel just for a moment what he thinks of me compared to even the people that love me the most is pretty amazing. It's the best question I've ever asked, and it's amazing how many prayers, no matter what they are, can be answered by just feeling loved. I am loved. I am special. A mother. A loving daughter. I am strong. I am a wife and a mother. I am a daughter of God. And He loves me so much. I know He loves me and I love Him too and I am a daughter of God.